Psst. <laughs> you want to learn more about classification? You have come to the right place. You see, I have studied the similarities and the differences between living things to figure out which ones to group together. And, of course, where they fit in the classification system. That's neat and everything, but what is the classification system? Ah, my specialty. One moment, please. <laughs> ah, a system is a way of arranging things that go together. Let's see how it works as we classify the royal kitty. <laughs> She's a common house cat. Wow! Okay, your royal highness. Now, this chart shows the seven levels of the classification system. We begin with kingdom. That's the largest group a living thing can be classified into. The house cat is in the kingdom Animalia, the animal kingdom. Living things in this kingdom have many cells, eat food, and can move on their own. The next level is phylum. The house cat is in the phylum Chordata. All animals with backbones belong in this phylum. The house cat is in the class Mammalia. Mammals have hair and produce milk for their babies. The house cat also belongs to the order Carnivora. It's a carnivore, a meat-eating animal. The house cat is part of the family Philidae, the cat family. The animals in this family are all types of cats. The house cat belongs to the genus Felis, cats that don't roar. And finally, the house cat is the species Domesticus. Domesticated means it has been tamed so it can live with people. So, you can see that Kitty's full royal title is Animalia Cordata Mammalia Carnivora Felidae Felis Domesticus. That's a mouthful. Well, indeed. But look at all I know about her just by knowing how she's classified. The royal kitty is an animal that moves, eats food to get energy, and is made of many cells. The common house cat has a backbone, has fur and produces milk for her babies, eats meat, is a type of cat that doesn't roar, and the common house cat is not a wild animal. It can live with people. Wow! Usually. That's a lot of information. Yes. The classification system also helps scientists find information. <laughs> hmm. Speaking of finding, I wonder what we might find in the royal kitchen. <laughs> I'm hungry. What about you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Let's apply the classification system here and see if we can find the ingredients for my favorite meal. Ah. All right. We will need hamburger, noodles, tomatoes and onions for the sauce, and for dessert, iced cream. I know where the hamburger is. It's here in the cold section of the refrigerator. The noodles don't need to stay cold. They're here in the cupboard with all the other dry goods. The tomatoes and onions are here in the basket with the other fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. I found the ice cream. It's with all the other frozen fruits. And it had best stay there until dessert, young lady. Hey, your kitchen is classified. Of course. Classification makes it easier for people to find what they're looking for. That's why scientists use the classification system. It makes it easy for them to find and share information. Take a look at this animal. What do you call it? That's a mountain lion. No, that's a cougar. I call it a puma. And we're all right. 
You see, in different parts of the country, people call this animal by different names. Animals also have different names in other languages as well. In Spanish, this animal is called Pantera. <laughs> to keep from being confused, scientists call organisms by their scientific name. Organism is another name for living thing. The organism that can be called a mountain lion, puma or cougar, has just one scientific name, Felis concolor. Felis is the animal's genus, and concolor is the animal's species. Remember that there are other animals that share a genus name. But only this animal has the full name Felis concolor. This system of naming living things was developed hundreds of years ago by a Swedish scientist named Carolus Linnaeus. It is called the binomial naming system. Bi means two and nomial means name. The two name system, genus, species. All this naming has made me hungry. Ah, yes. Uh, at first, a test. Who remembers the seven different levels of the classification system? Uh, well. Ah, lunch is a clue. How? <laughs> Here's a little trick to help you remember for next time. Take the first letter of each of the levels of the classification system. Then make a sentence about my favorite lunch. Came Philip came over for good spaghetti. Now, say the sentence, but just use the first letter of each of the words to remind you of the classification system. King Philip came over for good spaghetti. Now, can you tell me the seven levels of classification? Oh, I see. Kingdom. Phylum. Class. Order. Family. Genus. And species.